Jeez. You know, as soon as I routed it and took it out of the clamp, I knew something was wrong. So, you know, you're shooting these videos, it's like you lose your concentration sometimes. Sometimes I feel like I'm only human. Good day, everyone. Welcome to Ferg TV. I'm Ray, and I'm glad you're here. Today, I figured I'd take a minute, show you how to make a dovetail drawer. You could do it. You just need a few simple tools. So this will, here's the router that I use. You don't have to use this. This is called a D-handled router, which makes it easy. It's like a pistol grip to, to grab, and then you have a knob to hold it down. I'll show you how to use it. The model is a 6911, um, and that's from Porter Cable. And I use a Porter Cable jig. <laughs> this stuff's old, so it's hard to see the writing on it, but it's a model 7116 Omni jig. This one happens to be the 24 inch. Uh, on me, Jake. So the way that you get oriented is, you know, I got to step back a second. My pots are all cut and I'm not showing you how to do all the math on everything. So you have to figure out drawers accordingly to openings and whatnot. But once you have that all done and you have sides and fronts and backs, you have to get oriented. So the thing that you do is you look at each piece, you figure out where it's going to go, this one's got a little chip out here that I couldn't sand out of it. So we're gonna make that the one that the draw face goes against and you'll never see it. So it's about hiding things. And then when we cut the groove at the bottom, most of that's going out. So you just look at everything and get oriented. Then when you uh, place all your pieces, what you do is you make a drawer and explode it, lay it, lay it out, right? <clears throat> so you have front, back, and two sides. And as you orient this, you do it standing in the front as if this will be the drawer that you pull in and out, just so that you get uh, oriented properly. Then you go around and you mark the uh, very front piece, A. The side is B, the back is C, and the other uh, side that's left uh, is, the, is the D. And so then you take your pieces, and I'm going to show you what you do with them from this point. The other thing that I did was I mocked my jig so that I don't get confused, because you don't do this every day. So these, the sides go up here, the fronts and backs go up the top. You notice that I mocked A and C, C and A, B and D. These are, are, are the letters that we put on to our... Uh, sides and front and back so that we can get oriented over here. So I'm going to show you how to make one. Now we're going to start off by taking our pieces over. We're going to start with our front and our left side. So the front is marked A, the left side is marked B. We'll take those two items over and what we're going to cut is right here. The pins and tails for this uh, side and front to come together. So this is the exact reason I have everything mocked because when you get over here, it's like, where does anything go? It's got chips in it because I've already made one. But we know that the, uh, the B and D go down here, which are the sides, and B is a side. I'll put that up, get it somewhat close at this point, and then we'll dial it in. In the end, it's gonna go right up against here. And then A is a front and back. It happens to be a front, rather, on this particular setup, and it, and it always would be on mine. So we'll bring that in. You always want to make sure that this is down, but really, if you've sanded all of these things at the same time, to the same thickness, you only have to set this one time. So you pull that in. It goes up against your stop over here. That's the bottom of the piece. And then the where we're making the uh, cut is actually the inside of the drawer. So the, the outside of the drawer goes down and against this. All right, and then we lock that in. And then we dial this one in. We just use this as a stop to bring that up. And now that that's in, we're gonna go against the stop that's here and against the top over here. And then you wanna keep these even. You wanna feel that and make sure you're in the right place because it will move a little bit when you go to lock it in. So you want to make sure you're where you need to be. And that 
feels pretty good right there. Okay, so with that dialed in, we're going to cut. And what the first thing that we're going to do with our router is we're going to cut backwards. So your router is spinning this way and we're going to cut backwards. It's called a climb cut, C-L-I-M-B cut. And that is a cut that's not only used here, it's used on other things. Whenever you cut backwards and, and cut into the wood with the rotation going the wrong way, because generally we go with the feed through. So we'd be feeding this way and it'd be cutting this way. We're going to do it just the opposite. And the reason to do that is we're going to make a relief cut here. We don't want to dig way in. We just kind of want to bounce off the outside and do a cut. And I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, we've got our hair and protection, our eye protection. We're going to take our router and we're going to come backwards and do our climb cut. So made a little uh, base to set the router in. As you can see, it's cut out there. Set it right in there. So there's your climb cut. All we did is relieve it. Now, normally you wouldn't stop. I did, I stopped just to show you. But we'll cut in where you would have come back and just started making your pins and tails. We're gonna act like we didn't stop and we're gonna cut our pins and tails. One thing I did want to point out, it's nice with this D router because you get to hold it here as a pistol grip. You have good control and you, you can hold this down in the front on here. That's how it looks when you have your pins and tails all cut. And it just, it, it doesn't take long, but the, the, the deeper the drawer or the wider the piece, the longer it takes. If you've done your calculations correct, this all ends up proper. The reason that you orient yourself like this, fronts, backs, sides, so you won't get messed up and you put your letters down and it's pretty easy to follow your way around. You put A and B, B to C, C to D, D to A, as you're doing over at the dovetailing jig. There's only one problem with that. When you're shooting a video and you lose your concentration, you end up with sockets on one end and pins on the other. Oh, geez. You know, as soon as I routed it and took it out of the clamp, I knew something was wrong. So there's my new replacement piece. So, you know, you're shooting these videos, it's like you lose your concentration sometimes. Sometimes I feel like I'm only human. Just wanted to point out, if you do everything correctly, you can see this is fitting pretty flush right there. I mean, there might be a minor indiscretion, 30 second or something, but you just sand that in. So if you've done everything properly, and the same goes for the opposite side. Let's see, you can turn it around here. It's not banged together or glued or anything. This, this is gonna go away when I bang that in. But you can see even the top is sitting pretty darn good because everything's calculated properly. With our sides, our fronts and backs, all of our pieces for the drawers all dovetailed. The next step is to come over here and we're gonna cut a, uh, a dado in it. Now, you would think that you would set up a dado blade. The problem with the dado blade is it usually ends up when you use the two outer blades a little too thick. Yeah, a little too wide, too thick. And what happens is the uh, material is sloppy in there. I found over the years the best way to do it is to use a blade that'll kind of give you a flat bottom, and this one will. It's a, it's a rip blade, but it's got a nice square tooth on it that kind of cleans everything up after and uh, gives you a pretty flat bottom. Well, here's the cut. So you can see that's pretty decent. So what you need to do for these uh, dovetails is you need to get a cut to go right inside of here. And the way that you do that, it works in, in two fashions. One is you need a half an inch 
clearance from the bottom of the drawer to the bottom of the drawer bottom. Yeah, I got that right. And our next cut will be up here to dial it in. You need to be a quarter inch groove, which we've done. Always have trouble with one handing it, but here we go. Yep. And so there's your quarter inch. So we've got that part of it dialed in. And the reason that we're doing this and that everything is laid out the way it is, is because if you go to the wrong side of this, you can see you're gonna be in the wrong place. And what that'll do is it'll cut through here and you'll see it. So with them set like this, I know this is the bottom. I pick them all up and lay them down like this, run them through. So let's take one of these and I can show you where we're gonna end up. Maybe, let's put a little light on the subject. Okay, so let's get a view here. So you can see what's gonna happen. The blade is gonna run in here and then the next cut is gonna be that way a little bit to go that way a little bit to expand that, uh, that groove to fit our plywood. Now by doing it this way, you can dial this right into your thickness because unfortunately, all of these pieces are not the same. And what I did on this job, because I'm combining, doing mine, I threw them in the, into the works. I got like 17 dovetail drawers to do all together. 17 or 19, I think it's 19. And um, I didn't take it all out of one sheet. And sheets run, they vary in different thicknesses. This way I can dial them all in. All right, now you can see how that uh, worked out. And then our next cut is probably going to end up right about here. And because of that, we won't run into this. Because if you cut that, then you're going to have a, a space on the outside. Made my adjustments for my final cut. It's important to have a, uh, a sample piece. And as you can see over here, I've got quite a few made up where they've got the first cut on them because I don't know what I'm gonna run into with that other batch of plywood. Now, these haven't been sanded yet, so this fits a little snug. And you go all the way around because plywood can vary and you wanna make sure it's going to fit. And it's, it's a little tight there. I might make one more cut. I took so little off, I didn't even start the vacuum up. So you can see now that this fits just a little bit better. I thought it would be a good idea to show you what these are like after you make that second cut. So here's the two different drawers, uh, drawer pieces, a front and a back and a side. And you can see what happens here. So you can see where we're cutting. And I'm going to show you what happens when you put it together. Well, that, that one doesn't actually go with that one. It can go here though. So when you put it together, I'm not going to bang it in. You can see that that groove is not visible. That's it. Uh, that fits good. And remember, I still have to sand all my components. So they're going to get the tiniest bit uh, thinner. And also they're going to slide into those grooves easier because there won't be anything sticking up on it. Now that everything is sanded and sized correctly, and then, you know, I put them all together as far as grouping them, the right pieces to, with the, the bottoms, with the sides and everything. So you don't have to think now. You don't want to have to think, you just want to follow through. And so there's a few ways to do this. One is with a rubber mallet, which I do a lot of times. And then another one is with blocks. And if you notice on the blocks, there's a shiny surface because I put uh, packing tape on it years ago, but it's still there and it's good to release from the glue. So the first thing you want to do is lay it out properly and that's why you still have your letters on it so you know what goes with what. And then I usually take these pieces and do this, actually. So now you notice that all the bottoms of these are headed in that direction. I did that for a reason, because we're going to put Fina Seal, and I'd like the Fina Seal to go towards the bottom, not towards the top. So if there's any squeeze out, it's underneath the drawer, and not on the top. Is this necessary to do this? No, it is not. And most people don't do it. it just makes a sturdier drawer. I like doing it. 
Doesn't mean it's right. It means it's the way that I do it. All right, then put your pieces back proper. We'll, now we're gonna glue up the uh, sockets here. So, we just go right on through. And the glue is going to go in here like so. There, there, there. Usually just drag a little bit across the top. There's gonna be some on your brush when you come through there. You don't want it squeezing all over the place. So you don't want a ton. And then the other one. And I usually do glue them all up at once. And then I don't have to deal with it. Again, I just put them together. Pretty simple what we're doing here. Then I take a little artist brush. Again, just something I've done over the years, and I keep a, a cup of water around, a little Dixie cup. I keep the, uh, the brush in there in between drawers so it doesn't get hard on you. And that makes a mess. Once that brush is stiff and the glue is drying on it, it's a little bit of a problem. Now you don't want too much glue in here. You just want enough. So in other words, just spread it out. Don't have pockets of glue all over the place. You want it everywhere. And, and the, when the pins go in, they're gonna kinda push the glue forward anyway. There you go. That's that. Put it back down, oriented properly so you don't get messed up. It's easy to get confused doing these things. It happens. And uh, you know, you don't want the wrong piece when you have glue and phenocele on it going to the wrong piece and then it's a mess. This is not one for the job I'm doing, this is one for us, for our drawer unit that we're making. Okay, this is going back in the water and now we're gonna put this together. So usually what I'll do, just do it so you can see, So I'll slide the bottom in and the best way to put the bottom in is to Try to center it on this piece, okay? And so, A, the front piece, goes over here. And then C goes to B, like so. And if you do it this way, the last piece is gonna wanna just fit right over the top here. I don't know, can you even see that? I need a camera person. <laughs> No, it's only me. You're looking at everything. I'm your everything. And that's probably why people aren't watching. Uh, if you get a minute and you subscribe, I sure would appreciate it. This would be a great time to take a second and go and do that. Boy, if I wasn't uh, would glue dry, and I would stop and wait for you, but I gotta keep moving. But all kidding aside, the channel could use some more subscribers. Uh, if you're finding any of this content to be interesting at all, I would appreciate it if you would subscribe. And, I don't know, maybe you can give it the old up yours. Don't do it for me, do it for YouTube. They love that sort of thing. You know that they have people that count those day and night. Night and day. It's a whole job. If you're looking for work, it might be something to consider. All right, here we go. We're going to clamp it up. I can see a little phenocele pushing into the center here. No big deal though. Now we're going to take a square and take a look at this. Put the long side this way, just like that. Looking good. And we're looking good. So if this was off, we could move these clamps accordingly to pull it together and twist it. And that's it. She is together. I thought it'd be a good idea to show you the method of using the mallet. And I use the mallet and also the clamps, but then the clamps come off. So we're gonna do the same thing that we did on the last one. We're going to orient everything with the bottom down. And again, keeping it towards the bottom. What I should have told you earlier was a good idea is to not stop this right at the end I haven't made drawers in a while. I probably did that on the last ones. Start inward a little bit, and then when you get down towards the end, don't go all the way to the end and go backwards, and you won't pull Phenocele up and, and onto the material up here. 
boom, there's your cleaner seal. All right, now, we're gonna take our glue, do what we did the last time. So we wanna spin our pieces back around so that they're proper. Always keeping them oriented so you don't get messed up. Now we'll take and put our glue in here. You know, you can do it one or two ways. You can put a good amount in there or you can drag some across the top. And just so that there's enough for your um, brush to always be wet and carry it across the top there for glue and you want it on all surfaces. It's probably quicker to just put a bigger dab inside here like this. You know, and if you have too much, wipe it on a paper towel, get it off of your, your brush. And you, if you have to, you can always go back to the water and rinse the brush a little bit. You don't want to have too much. It's going to just blow all over inside. You want to have enough, though, so that you don't have a joint failure. There's that happy medium that you got to come up with. Yeah, I wasn't going to show you one of these, but then I said, you know what? These bigger drawers are a little more challenging, so you just get the water off of your brush than the smaller ones are, and there's a way to do them. And basically, this, this part of it's all the same. You see, I, I got enough glue in here inside the socket so I can pull it right up and lay it up here. And see, I'm starting to get a lot of glue in there. So we're gonna wipe some of that off on a paper towel. You probably can't see that, I'm off on the side, but I put it on a paper towel because I was getting too much glue. It's about regulating it. So you kind of want to have a nice film on here, but not beat it up. And that's that one, the back. This is the front one. Do the same to it. Boom. There she is. Wipe off the excess glue off the brush, put it back in the cup of water. All right, and here we go. So, Turn it so you can see. So you're saying, what's the difference? It looks like you're doing the same thing you did the last time. I am. The difference will be how we put it together. We're going to use the mallet. Come on, baby. There you It's about getting your pots lined up. And you don't want it to tip over here because it's a little bit of a catastrophe. Because everything's got something on it, whether it's glue or Fina Seal or... I'm hoping we're still in frame there. I can't see. Yeah, not really. Here we go. As soon as you stand the drawer up, it's out of frame. Okay, so what we're going to do here now is tap it in. And this is, this is where you find out if you put too much glue in there <laughs> inside the sockets, <laughs> if it doesn't want to go in on you. All right, that went down pretty darn good. So what we're gonna do here is we're just gonna make sure it's all pulled in. Put these on here, like so. A little taller than we need, but it doesn't matter. What I usually do is put the bottom on first and it holds everything in. I think I'm just going to go on the side here. There, I'm going to pull that in. Ah, nobody move! <sighs> Got it. <laughs> Let's beat the glue from drying here. Okay. Crank that in. And then we're gonna release it. As soon as I pull it all in. Okay. That just pulled everything in all the way. Because <clears throat> if you're hitting it and there's too much glue in one of those sockets or, well, for whatever reason, Mr. GoPro decided to take a break. Must be union. So what I was saying is if you have too much glue inside those sockets, it's it's hard to bang it in with the mallet because it wants to just keep bouncing and it, it's not the same kind of pressure as that steady pressure that you can get with the uh, clamps. 
And now once you've pulled that together like that, we are good. So, I hope you can see it there, give you a good view. They're all the same. And that's it. Forgot to do one thing, didn't I? And you're all yelling at home, I heard you. Boom, right on the money. Okay, so it's square, it's pulled together. There's nothing else I can do for this. I don't need to leave it clamped, and I've made an awful lot of these. I don't know if I pointed this out before, but these drawers over here are for our desk, and these are for my customer. These are three quarter inch thick, these are five eighths, because I wanted to save weight in the trailer. So you can make them different thicknesses, you just have to do the correct measurements for your draw tracks and everything, and based off of that, and the book from Bloom, because we're using Bloom undermounts, tells you all of that. Well, that's gonna wrap this up uh, for Dovetail Drawers. Thanks for joining me, I sure appreciate it. If you got a second and you can go and subscribe, I'd really appreciate it. We're trying to build our subscribers. If you're getting anything out of this and find it worthwhile, maybe you'll subscribe. I, I wish you would. And uh, maybe you'll give it the old up yours. I'd appreciate that too. YouTube loves that kind of stuff. But with, without the fooling around part of this, it has to do with the algorithms. If these videos don't get pushed forward, people don't see them. They don't get many views. We're just not grabbing subscribers. So, you know, it's kind of nice if you would do it for me. I'd appreciate it. Thanks, and I'll see you on the next one.